We're going to bring in another Washington insider now. David Addington is with us. He served as legal counsel, also chief of staff to former Vice President Dick Cheney. He is now vice president of domestic and economic policy studies at the Heritage Foundation. He's in our D.C. bureau. David, thanks so much for joining us. Juliana Goldman just saying a weak speaker at this juncture is dangerous. You know these power players well. What does this imply, this delayed vote for Boehner? Well, of course, he's not a weak speaker. He was speaker yesterday, speaker today, and he'll be speaker tomorrow. Uh, this is not about particular persons in Washington or the politics or who's up or down. This is about whether we can achieve our goal of driving down spending toward a balanced budget, maintaining our ability to protect America, and to do all that without raising taxes. And that's what the heroes on the House side who said they're not voting for this bill are trying to achieve. David, you say that Boehner is not a weak speaker. That said, he clearly does not have enough support even from his own party. With the familiarity of these wranglings that you know well, what does this imply? Or should we just pack now? No, uh, we have three days left. And while from the point of view of markets uh, and, and of the president, who has to, after all, administer a government, that makes them nervous. But that is time for Congress to get the job done. And I'm fairly confident they will get the job done. I think the likelihood of the government not paying its bills on Wednesday is, is limited. I think they'll solve the problem before that. Uh, but that'll make it a busy day today. The, the piece that's missing here is why the Senate is sitting, uh, uh, Senate Majority Leader Reid's in charge, over there twiddling their thumbs while this is going on in the House. The House passed over a week ago a cut, cap, and balance bill that's sent to the Senate. The Senate decided it wouldn't take that bill up. The Senate liberals voted not to take it up. Well, now they should take it up, discuss it, uh, to, uh, make whatever amendments they want, and send it to the House. Uh, David, I mean, you've made the point yourself that the Reid and the Boehner plans are not really that far apart. So maybe it is easy to find compromise here. No, actually, uh, last night's vote shows that it doesn't work. The Boehner and the Reid bills are very similar, unfortunately, because they don't have very good cuts in them and they have a lot of smoke and mirrors. But the House vote, uh, or rather the House decision not to take it up last night indicates the votes aren't there for it. The president could invoke the 14th Amendment, right, to bypass the debt ceiling. I mean, former President Bill Clinton says he would invoke it. President Obama, though, saying he would all but rule it out. What do you think of that possibility? Uh, President Obama actually has ruled it out, and properly so. And uh, the general counsel of the Department of the Treasury wrote a letter saying specifically that that's not an option that's available. And he's correct. The 14th Amendment simply says that you cannot question the validity of the public debt. No one's questioning the validity of it. The issue is, does it get paid or not? But no one's saying, oh, we don't really owe that money, that it's not a valid debt. So the 14th Amendment option is a nice talking point that people have had fun with, but it's not an option available to the president. Because when you were in the White House, I mean, you were somebody who was known to really be pushing uh, for the expansion of executive powers. Now, oddly enough, or rather appropriately enough at that time, that was due to terrorism. But I hear you loud and clear. You say this is not the same case at all. Oh, well, that's correct, and I, I dispute the premise. Uh, what I pushed for and what I would hope every federal employee would push for is faithfully executing the Constitution of the United States. All right, David. Now, with all of this going on, you did tell us a few moments ago you think it is highly likely that a deal does get done even before the weekend, so that's good news for taxpayers. What form do you think it is most likely to take? It's not clear yet what the form will be, but given what the uh, difficulty is getting a vote for these puny cuts uh, for the first year that are proposed in the House, there's hope that uh, as they work on this today and, and through the weekend shift, which Congress usually doesn't do, that they'll be able to come to agreement on perhaps uh, stronger first-year cuts. Stronger first-year cuts. Spending. but uh, All right, but you don't have any more idea, knowing Washington as you do, uh, a little bit more about the form. You care to speculate? Well, they, they, uh, my speculation would be that they need to get simpler, not more complicated. They're in the business of rounding up votes now. And uh, in this town, there are lots of words, but only two matter in the legislature, and that's yes and no. And they've got to find enough yeses in both houses, get that passed, get it to the president by Tuesday. That means simple. That means do a spending cut a large one, raise the debt ceiling, and don't put the other 100 pages of the Boehner plan or the other 50 pages of the Reid plan in it to complicate it and make people worried that it's yet more kicking the can down the road and smoke and mirrors.
David, get simple. It's a good plan. It's a good idea. Thanks very much. David Addington joining us there is a former chief of staff, also legal counsel for former Vice President Dick Cheney joining us there from our D.C. Bureau.